ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Welcome to sports, everybody. Another podium finish for Team Bahamas at the 23rd edition of the Central American and Caribbean Games going on in Colombia. Our Kelsey Johnson was there for the gold medal performance. With the clearance of 2.28 meters, Donald Thomas soared his way to the top of the field in the men's high jump event and landed the fourth gold medal for Team Bahamas on Wednesday night. The competition was good. Uh, it was stiff competition out there. The guys really showed up and they motivated me to jump and it was a good competition. It must not be easy, especially traveling from so far to come down here to Colombia to compete. Yeah, it wasn't easy at all. I came from Europe just to represent Bahamas. Uh, I just sang the BOA and uh, the B-Trades for selecting me to be on the team and I just want to thank the government of Bahamas for allowing me to represent the Bahamas. Are you pleased with the height that you cleared and bowed out of the competition in? Yeah, the main focus for me was just to come out here and win and jump a, jump a good height and I, I believe I did that and uh, I just thank God for the victory. Thomas's golden victory pushed the overall medal count for Team Bahamas to seven, four gold, three silver, and a bronze. It was the first medal for the Games for Team Bahamas in athletics. The men's high jump field was very competitive. Bahamian Jamal Wilson was also in the count of highly ranked jumpers. He finished fifth overall with 2.24 meters. Alonzo Russell lined up in the final of the men's 400 meters. His time, 46.18 seconds, placed him sixth overall. Reporting from Barranquilla, Colombia, where the 23rd edition of the CAC Games is taking place, I'm Kelsey Johnson, ZNS Total Sports. Our women's tennis team taking part in the Nations Cup yesterday at CAC. Going up against the host country, Simone Pratt got things going in her first singles appearance at the Games. And she would struggle, failing to win a single game. She went down six love and love. It was a pretty rough day today. You know, I played a very tough opponent and she just happened to be better today. I felt like I was getting in position and setting up and hitting much better um, than in my doubles matches. But considering that I haven't played any sing, um, singles matches this whole tournament, it was a bit tough to get in the rhythm. Kerry Cartwright took to the court next, and she got off to a much better start, winning the first set. Kerry dropped a close second set, meaning everything came down to the third and deciding set. And behind the home crowd, the Colombian would put Kerry away 2-6, 6-4, and 6-4 to clinch the win. It was tough going in there. I was pretty nervous, but um, I played really well in the first set. Um, I was attacking a lot in the first, and that helped me a lot. I didn't give her much time to get into the match. In the second, um, it was really tight, really close, um, and she made a few good um, points um, where, when it was four all, and from then, um, she took the second set, and then the third set, it was just pretty tight, and she played really well. Three days of competition complete at the Caribbean Amateur Golf Championships in the Cayman Islands. In the men's Herman Cup division, the Bahamas in sixth place with a 50 over 902. Paul Svus is still the top Bahamian, tied for 19th with a 14 over 227. Our ladies sit fourth in the race for the George Teal Trophy with a 37 over 463. Haley Turnquist leads the way for the Bahamas. She's in ninth with a 16 over 229. The fourth and final round will tee off tomorrow. From the WNBA last night, John Quill Jones starting to find her groove from last year as the second half of the WNBA season got underway. She had a game-high 21 points to lead the Connecticut Sun to a big 92-77 win over the New York Liberty. The Sun now at 15-12 and 12 on the season, and that is good enough for seventh spot as the playoff push begins. They play again on Sunday against Las Vegas. With WNBA still in season, John Quell unable to suit up for Team Bahamas at the Women's Central Basket Tournament, which is now under 17 days away. Interim coach Wade Watson still looking to assemble the best team possible. We're hoping that the year should grind. We'll, we'll come out and commit to the team. Um, we're hoping that Waltia, you know, she's home. We're hoping that she can come out, but, you know, um, I don't, I, I don't know what to say. I, I really have to wait and see if they determine if they're going to come out. But 
Um, we're hoping that they can come out. Um, Coach Coach Yo, um, she's talking to one or two of the, the, the players in the United States and saying if we could get them to come out to this window because this is a really, really big window. It's central basket, but you have um, perennial powerhouses like Mexico, um, Dominican Republic, um, Cuba, um, Paraguay, and Uruguay, and Puerto Rico. Um, so this tournament is going to be a really, really tough tournament for the Bahamas. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the ladies, we are hoping that uh, our best players will come out and represent. Because once we, once we win this tournament, um, then we'll be able to qualify for World Cup, which will take us uh, one step closer to qualifying for the Olympics. The Bahamas Government Departmental Basketball Association back on court last night at the AF Adelie Gym. The game changes only with five players on their roster in search of their first win of the season. And they finally found the right recipe against the NIB Kings. They prevailed 64-52 behind 22 points and 14 rebounds from Dwight Moss. He's a little shorter, man. Five guys. We know we had to limit our foul troubles. Uh, we had to stay in the zone, keep our hands down, play good defense, rebound, and we know we would have been able to keep in it. And we was able to pull through. We kept our composure. A uh, bunch of good guys over there. Everyone was moving the ball, playing hard, playing hard. So that's what you do. We play hard. Better team one, I felt. You got to trust one another more than you ever have. You know you don't have the luxury of bringing someone off the bench, so just got to play smart and we'll do what you can do. We could be as good as we want to be. If we could get some more numbers, then maybe we could compete a little better. But I like the five we have. The Emancipation Holiday Weekend is upon us. And tonight, Amajal Noel tells us about an event for those of you who will be here in the capital. Well, for all you fighting fans out there, you're in for a treat as this Friday marks the return of the BOMAC fight card as BOMAC 4 Cage Fights the Strikers Quest is set to take place at the Malia Cable Beach Resort. Our news team catching up with one of the fighters on the card, hometown striker Cameron Lewis, on how his training has been going. I just been training to get my endurance up, my stamina up, get my gas tank up because last time, the last one mark, I don't really like my performance. I, I kind of gas out even though I won. I still feel as if I gas myself pretty quick. So I was working on my, on, on my stamina, jogging, you know, doing time rounds on the bikes, you know, doing over the amount of time that I'd actually seen the ring so I could, you know, go as hard as I won the ring, you know. Now, as for how we got into MMA, since 2014, uh, I just found myself getting back into the gym because of life, well, you know. But, yeah, I, I've been working hard, so through hard work, I want to come out with a W, you know. Lewis also saying he has a game plan and has already started scouting his opponent. I don't feel as if he is as structured and moving as me, so that's why I'm trying to avoid him from moving. I ain't trying to go through all that, so I want to control the fight as as soon as possible in it as as soon as i can um but i don't want to rush it because i'm not trying to you know gas out the first round and, you know but yeah i feel as if uh, I, I feel confident the card is headlined by the main event where bohemian kickboxer giovanni mofire johnson will take on angolan pedro casoma the event begins at 7 p.m for zetna soul sports i'm amajal Knowles. And that will do it for sports. Stay tuned. The Bombs Tonight comes back after the break.